The sun was already beginning to set over the horizon, and the coming evening, as usual, did not portend anything interesting or unusual. The next, Groundhog Day, in Dosha's life has passed, and everything has remained unchanged, everything is as before. She could already predict in advance how this evening would pass, lying on the couch, with a phone in her hands, on the screen of which there was only an endless stream of memes or news, and no one would even write or call. So time will fly by until the onset of complete darkness, which, as usual, she will not notice, and when she realizes that it would be nice to turn on the light, it will already be half past eleven on the clock, and it's time to go to bed, because tomorrow she will go back to school. These thoughts should have made her sad, however, Dosha was already used to it and just lay on the couch, from time to time, poking at the phone or, as dad liked to say, crushing germs. From a fleeting memory of her father, she smiled, but not for long, the smile only glided across her face for a few seconds, replaced by the already familiar expression of indifference. And then, she shuddered. There was a knock on the wall next to the sofa. It was short-lived, as if someone had just tapped with his knuckles. Dosha took her eyes off the screen and looked at the wall. There was nothing unusual. Just as she was about to return to her occupation, the knock was repeated. It was just as short, unobtrusive, so that it felt like it was just a child playing around. Not knowing what to do, Dosha raised her hand and knocked three times on her wall. Silence reigned. Just as the girl wanted to continue watching the memes, there was a knock in response, this time a little longer. She became interested. And then, an idea flashed into my head. She immediately scored Morse code in the search engine and, finding what she was looking for, tried to tap hello on the wall. Oddly enough, the answer was not long in coming. In response, a series of taps was heard, by which Dosha somehow realized that someone behind the wall also greeted her. We are gaining momentum, the girl thought and, having roughly figured out how to knock, tried to ask, how are you? There was no answer for a long time. Apparently, about five minutes. It seems to be quite a bit, but for an interested person, sometimes even a minute is an eternity. And only Dosha thought that the interlocutor did not understand her, as in response, finally, there was a series of knocks, according to which she somehow made out that, they say, everything is fine. For some reason, she suddenly felt warm in her soul. From the feeling that at least someone is doing well in this life. However, there was silence again. Dosha didn't know what else to say. More precisely, she knew, but did not understand how it was possible to communicate with the help of tapping, as in the books about prisoners that she had once read. And then, an idea came to her again. The girl turned her gaze to the numbers in Morse code and, looking at the screen, began tapping her phone number. She didn't know if the person behind the wall would understand her, but she was just wondering what would come of it. In the end, at least some variety of grey everyday life. Finally, I got through. Silence reigned again. Minute, second, third, everything is quiet. At some point, Dosha thought that she would not be answered when something clicked behind the wall, followed by one knock. She was alert when suddenly, the phone rang. The girl shuddered and turned her gaze to the screen. The caller's number was not displayed and there was only an inscription, hidden. Not knowing what to think, she answered. Hello. She said, trying to contain her excitement. Hello. A hoarse female voice was heard. You tap the numbers on the wall for me, right? Dosha's eyes bulged in surprise and felt her heart suddenly beat faster. Yes, yes, it's me. She leaned her ear against the wall, but there was only silence. You know, I'm so glad that we're talking to you. By God, thank you for taking the time for me. The voice continued. Well, what are you? Dosha answered confusedly. I, after all, am also very happy about it. Are you lonely too? Here, there is such a. And me, the voice almost whispered. Even, I would say, dreary. How do I understand you? The girl spoke sympathetically. And tell me, why didn't I display your number? The voice coughed, but Dosha did not hear anything behind the wall. It looks like her interlocutor has gone to another room. I do not know, the voice answered a little quieter. Let's not talk about it. Okay. What's your name? Dosha, and you? Anya, it's very nice to meet you. 
Likewise. You know, but for some reason it seems to me that you are not much older than me. Anything is possible. Twenty years of age is not senile. Ah, you're twenty. But I'm the same age. See how good it is. Maybe then on, you? Yes, yes, of course. Well, Anya, are you sick there or something? There is a little. Get well. There's no need to get sick nowadays. I agree. Why did you knock on the wall? I don't know. I was just bored. See how boredom introduces people. Oh, yes. They started talking. Dosha began to pour out her soul to her new friend, she told about her childhood, about her parents, about her studies and about how lonely she was. Anya listened attentively to everything, sometimes she said something, tried to make a joke, from time to time she told something from her life. So, Dosha found out that her new friend recently had a boyfriend, although she did not say what happened to them, however, the girl did not want to ask, you never know, is something personal, that he liked to surprise her, even the most banal and she loved him for it. The minutes imperceptibly turned into an hour, and then the second, and the girls were still chatting, now and then laughing at another story from the life of one or the other. Well, okay, said Anya. It's probably time for you to go to bed, tomorrow, because you have to study. Dosha looked at her watch and was surprised to find that midnight was coming soon, and she had to get up early. You're right, she replied. Get well there. Hold on. Thank you. And good luck to you tomorrow at school. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Just Dosha wanted to ask her to give her number, as Anya disconnected. I didn't want to knock on the wall anymore. I hope he will call tomorrow, the girl thought, spreading out the bed. Exactly at midnight she went to bed, but she could not fall asleep until one o'clock in the morning, because the thoughts in her head were spinning very different. In the morning, leaving the apartment, Dosha looked at the door of the apartment next to her. She hadn't noticed it at all before, a typical front door covered in red leather. However, now she knew that Anya lived there, who was ill, but who, perhaps, would call her today. Although, why, maybe. She will definitely call. Dosha was somehow sure of this. Couples at the institute dragged on tiresomely slowly, the girl almost fell asleep on them. Although she tried to have time to write everything, apparently, lack of sleep that night affected her. Finally, classes are over. The dream disappeared like a hand, and Dosha, inspired, almost jumped home, because tonight she shouldn't be lonely. I came to the apartment, changed my clothes, settled on the couch, clutching the phone in my hands and knocked on the wall a couple of times. There was no answer, and the bell did not ring. She knocked again, is silence again. What is it? The girl tried to call a hidden number, but in vain, the call was impossible. And then, an idea came to her again. She went to the exit of her apartment, hastily put on the first sneakers she came across and went out into the entrance. She looked at the red door of the apartment next to her, and hesitantly rang the bell. I leaned my ear against it. Silence. She pressed the bell button again, and again silence. Maybe something happened? An elderly woman came out of the apartment opposite, who looked at Dosha, who was ringing at this door. What are you calling for? There is no one there. She said. How not? The girl asked uncomprehendingly. Well, how is it? No, that's it. No one has lived there for twenty years. But that's where the girl lives, isn't it? Maybe you wanted to say, lived? What do you mean? Dosha asked in bewilderment. Well, a girl lived there twenty years ago. Yes, only she was killed there, and no one has lived there since. Are you kidding? What kind of jokes are there? Dosha entered her apartment in shock and closed the door. An incredible number of very different thoughts were flying in my head. Who was behind the wall? Who called her? Who was she talking to? Was it all real, or did her mind, out of loneliness and longing, invent all this? She looked at the call history. The conversation with the hidden number has not gone away. So, it was after all, but then who called if the person behind the wall has been gone for a long time? The girl ran to her room, opened the window wide and leaned out into the coolness of the street, 
hoping to find the windows of the apartment from which she was knocked. She saw them. There was a plentiful layer of black dust on the cornice, which, for unknown reasons, the wind did not blow away and the rains did not wash away, and the windows themselves were tightly closed from the eyes with a black cloth. But there was someone there, since there was a knock, thought Dosha, closing the window. Not knowing what to do, she tried to knock on that very wall and leaned her ear against it. Nothing but silence, the girl tried again, but again no one answered her. Dosha was suddenly upset, because she decided that she was just starting to go crazy from loneliness. I deleted the hidden number from the history, thinking that it was just someone's stupid joke and listened to my favorite music for the rest of the day, hoping to smooth out the stress. Closer to night, she did it, however, her brain desperately did not want to sleep, so she had to take sleeping pills, which did not immediately work. She slept for a long time. When I woke up, I realized that there was no point in going to couples anymore. However, Dosha was slightly upset because of this, because there was an opportunity to weigh and comprehend everything adequately, and besides, it was Friday. Deciding to reflect on the meal, the girl quickly dressed and went to the nearest grocery store. Passing by the mailboxes, she noticed that a leaf was peeking out from behind her door. Dosha was surprised, because she did not expect letters from anyone, and the time to pay for the apartment has not yet come. As she got closer, she smelled a strange sickening smell, similar to the smell of fresh, freshly dug earth. Then I noticed that the leaf itself was in some spots. The girl pulled it out of the drawer and found that it was a piece of paper stained in the ground, and on it, in a small but rather beautiful, apparently, female handwriting, was written, Hello, Dosha. I didn't want to tell you about it, but you found out everything yourself. I was killed in that apartment 20 years ago, my boyfriend killed me. I don't really want to say what happened, however, what's done is done. Let my body be buried, but I remained there inside. Few people came to my funeral, you know how insulting. And I'm still there, alone and I can't get out, and I'm lonely, for how many years I knocked on the previous owner of your apartment, to no avail, I just swore in vain, thinking that from above. You answered me, even called me. Imagine how nice it is. For so many years, at least talk to someone, listen to someone. Now I will probably be able to find peace, but I only ask for one thing, e at least you come to me, even infrequently, but sometimes. Thank you very much. Anya. Dosha reread the note in shock. I rubbed my eyes. No. This was reality. She couldn't believe it. She turned the sheet over. There was written the name of the cemetery and the plot. Going to the store by itself disappeared, as curiosity took over. After an hour by bus, she finally got to the right cemetery, which was a grim sight, although what else could it be, since the dead are gathered here? Along the way, I bought a couple of carnations in the store and went to look for the right site. Grave graves, Dosha finally found him and began to look for the right grave, although she understood that she had never seen this very Anya, and the note did not specify which row. She walked between the rows until, after all, she came across a small black marble grave, on which a black and white portrait of a girl was painted. It was Anya. The dates of life coincided with the age and year of death. That's righty it's her. Dosha examined the monument. It was covered in dust, the marble slabs were strewn with dry leaves and grass. Only the portrait of Anya was bright, as if it had just been applied. The girl, as best she could, brushed the dust off the grave, removed the grass and leaves and only then put flowers. Sleep, she thought. And I will come sometimes. I promise. From a branch of a birch tree that towered nearby, some small light bird fluttered up and rushed somewhere up. Dosha looked after her and thoughtfully wandered to the bus stop. When she got home, she felt somehow lighter in her soul, as if a heavy stone had rolled down a mountain. At night she slept peacefully. Only in the morning I could not understand whether it was the truth, or I dreamed that someone was knocking on the wall.